Demon possession, or as some people call it, loopy with the devil stuff. Some people are never freed of their unwelcome guests, while others are saved by exorcism. And what are these people? How do they cope with life after their demons are cast out? Well, one young priest named Gerald Henry has formed a support group to help these people, and he let our cameras in. Alright fellas, thank you for once again coming to our little support group. We have some men in taping tonight, so maybe we should go around the room and uh, introduce ourselves and the demon we were possessed with. Dale? Uh, my name is Dale John. I'm an investment banker. I was um, possessed by the demon of greed named Mammon. Hi, I'm Fred. I'm actually unemployed. I was possessed by the demon Belkabor of Sloth. My name's Chris Brenner, and I own a corporation that produces mass quantities of porn. I was possessed by Asmodeus, the demon of lust. Okay, well, let's get back to where we were last week. Fred was telling us a story about himself during the possession. Start back at the beginning, Fred. Well, I was actually talking about one morning when I woke up. <laughs> I was crying on the ceiling. I had a really long tongue. And I shoot it all about to eat flies. Oh god. <laughs> That's your best? Jiminy, it sounds like your demon was a downright ramp. Now, Chris. I had to be tied down at night because my demon would be out fornicating with small animals and defecating in a neighbor's bird bath. That's nothing. My demon killed the priest that tried to exercise it. He threw him out the window and onto a spiked fence. Well, my demon used to make me touch myself. All right, that wasn't the demon. But he did make me show crucifixes up my ass. Wait a minute. All right, that wasn't the demon either. Gentlemen, talking about your demon with pride is a good way to get repossessed by the demon of pride. Chris, why don't you tell everyone how your demon put you in that chair? Okie dokie. Contrary to what you might see in certain films, when your neck does that real cool 360 around, well, let's just say you never use the bathroom on your own again. Dale, how about you? What has happened to you? Well, I... I don't know how to say this, but, uh... I miss my demon. Go on, Dale. I mean, for one thing, I've never had so many friends over at my house. Um, he also helped me open up to my mother when I called her a, um, a whore and, and said she had a million dung beetles crawling out her mouth. She really listened to me. Well, Dale, that's where the power of the demon lies, in the truth. So his mom's mouth is full of dung flies? Not that. So you're saying his mother's a whore? Hey, my mom's not a whore. You sure? I could probably get her a three-picture deal. I'm saying the truth of the demon being good to have. Wait a minute. Hey, 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 I know what Father is saying. I mean, look at me. I used to be a 300-pound bitch. But after all that projectile vomiting, 
I'm about to just float where I'm at now. That's not what I mean at all. My demon made me feel wanted. When you have women and friends around only because you have a lot of money, that gets old fast. Osmodeus wanted me for me. This is blasphemy, people. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't ask for some priest to come into my house and exercise my demon. Your family asked me to come in. You know, if I was still possessed, I'd be able to walk, screw, and write my name in the blood of my enemies all over the walls. Things I enjoyed doing. Okay, maybe we should just end this. You know, the demon was making me a better person. I had a girlfriend, a steady income, and my face was just beginning to clear up. It's getting late. Maybe we should reconvene next week. Why? You already ruined our lives. Maybe if I call my demon, I can get him back. Do you know where I can get a supply of crucifixes? Demon possession and the mystery still to be unraveled. Upcoming on Encounters, we talk to people who sold their souls to the devil. Join us next week on Encounters.